content worth chasing and content not worth chasing. Now, I just want to sort of do a disclaimer because I said this in the chat that obviously all content, no matter what it is, will improve your team regardless. And I could say to everyone, go out and get every five star possible, guys. Go and get them all and level them all to max and you will have everything in the game and every sort of avenue to do well. And that is true. But it's quite unrealistic for most players. And so when we sort of say to players, like, go and chase this content, it's very well and good saying, like, yeah, just go and throw a thousand dollars at the game and go and do that. But not most people are going to do that. It's not worth the investment, guys. And again, I always talk about getting the most bang for your buck. That's what I always talk about on this channel. I want to talk about, oh, go and max everything out. That's why that if you look at my war team, which we'll show you in a bit, it's not all maxed out. I don't need to max it out. It does what it does now. It does. It scores 300s. It does well. It operates. And it most of the bots, so it's one bot I need to level more, which we'll talk about again later, because it doesn't quite do what it needs to do. Once they do what I need it to do, it's done. I'll slow level it. And it's just getting more XP once it does what it needs to do. If it doesn't do what it needs to do, it gets leveled more. For example... I'm pretty sure Robuster is 6811 because that's the key point where you can destroy a shock tower shielded by the shield generator. Now that is the pinnacle of HP. A shock tower next to a shield generator is the most difficult thing to take out in the game as a one shot. If you can do that at 6811, why do I need 6911? I don't, it's overkill. And so that's what it's all about for me is when a bot does what you need to. And the first thing I think that when we talk about content that's not really worth chasing, and again, you can sort of tell by the way I'm talking, it's definitely ranks, without a doubt. When you talk about ranks, so to get a bot from Corporal to Captain is what? 40,000 shards? 40,000 shards is out of reach for most players. So when we look at this, 40,000 shards. So here you've got 5,000 rook shards for $100. 5,000. So if you wanted to get 40,000, I mean, yes, you're going to get dupes and things like that. I reckon you'd have to get about 30k and you get the rest in shards, maybe, or 25k. So you're talking five dollars You're talking $500 for one bot. Now, granted, as you can see, you're going to have some shards from that bot already or might have it sergeant already but you can see that it's a big investment for one bot now each bot you increase to captain is 15 percent increase but that's if you level every single bot or eight to captain it's a 15 percent over your team so you divide it by two each bot is roughly a two percent increase so to give sea spray captain it will give my team a 2% increase in HP and DPS. If you're talking $400 for a 2% increase, if I said to you tomorrow, your maxed out bot that's level 70, give me $400 and it will be level 70.5, not even a full level, for $400, you'd call me mad. You'd be like, you're crazy, was I? That's a ridiculous amount of money for nothing, basically, that I can earn for next to nothing. And you'd be right, that it's very expensive for what you actually get. 15% is not a lot in the scheme of things. For how many shards you've got to get and how much you've got to invest. Remember, that $500 for one bar, so that's by eight. I worked it out, you're probably lo looking at about one to $2,000 to get a team to captain rank. Yes, you can use five-star shards, but my point in the chat is that Five-star bots, if you've got them all, then yeah, fair enough. Use your five-star shards for ranks because there's nothing else really to spend them on. But if you, there's bots out there you need that you haven't got, go and get them bots. Some of them bots will solve an issue in the game. So ranks for me, not really ideal. The next ones will be a bit of a surprise to most people. But it's, it's, it's actually G1s. Because when you look for the G1 cores... A lot of them don't add much to your bots if you really look at them. Sunstreaker, it increases ability damage. 
sort of the volatile mixture is if you had a choice between having a level 20 volatile mixture and going chip buying bundles to try and get Sunseekers G1, it's not really worth it, really. Laser Optimus Amalgamus is a lot better. If you've got two bots that need Amalgamus, I can understand chasing it. But no. Is anybody going to chase Hounds G1? I hope not. Really, really poor. Hot Rod's pretty good. But you can see, you've got a mixed bag. Hotspot's not very good. It's a very mixed bag of G1s. If you're going to chase G1s for all your bots, then it's going to cost you a lot in bundles. When in fact, most just need a Prime Core. Most of my bots have a Prime Core on them with a couple of G1s that increase damage. But a Volatile Mixture on, say, Sea Spray will last forever. Because if it doesn't fit Sea Spray and a new bot comes out, a new gunner, that Volatile Mixture will transfer onto the next bot. Whereas a Sea Spray G1 won't transfer. It stays on Sea Spray. And so that is now irrelevant content. And you go back to the VM on whatever bot, unless it has a G1. And so, chasing G1s as a whole, I don't think is a good tactic for a player to spend on. If you get it, if you can do the uh, core swaps, then yeah, brilliant. There's three ways to get these cores that are very beneficial. But just keep in mind that some of these bots won't even make your war team. And if they do, you'll probably hit them with a prime core instead. So don't go out just chasing G1 cores willy-nilly, just because it has a G1. Go and look at other options. Will the Volta Mixture just do? And the one is <laughs> it's actually endurance bots. I don't see the big appeal because what you find is that we bring these new endurance bots out and they're very rushed. And if you look at last year, the only two bots that came out last year that really fitted well into the meta is Roadbuster and Blue Streak. Now Roadbuster originally was awful. So originally the only bot that came out last year that was any real good was Blue Streak. Don't get Robuster had a buff later on when he got put into a batch. And so as an endurance bot, he was awful. Brawn, awful. Aerial, awful. Uh, Alpha Triumph, pr pretty awful. You see where I'm going with this. Retgar, awful. A lot of the endurance bots have not been very good over the last two or three years. You tend to find that the five-star batches, when they come out, the better bots are in the five-star batches. And so for me, especially if you're a mid to low player, I would save your shards. I'd go for the four-star in endurance, get the five-star shards, save them, get the battle pass, or side pass as such. It's a lot cheaper. Save those resources for the five-star batches and go and get them. You'll find there's a lot better uh, bots in those at a lot cheaper price than going for an endurance and so i don't think it's really worth chasing endurance five stars now we're going to content worth chasing and the first one is combats combats can be equipped to any bot pretty much i'm not a fan of these weapons because they're very specific so again if you get specific uh, weapon and that is for sentius and sentius comes to meta then goes away again that combat goes away with him whereas the uh, weapon, sorry, goes away with him. But the combats, they're forever. So once you've got the likes of Nightstick, as the meta changes and Brainstorm, who has Nightstick right now, falls away from the meta, and then all of a sudden, let's just say, Whirl comes into the meta because they're gonna, I could put Nightstick on Whirl. It's transferable. So if you're gonna chase something, guys, go and chase combats. Combat's probably the better alternative. Because you can really change a bot from being good to very good with the right combat. Especially these combats like Nightstick, like Glitch, like Flak, Bash Breaker, Buzz Strike. All these sort of combats can really change um, how bot operates. We talked earlier about the new bot or Roadbuster putting Buzz Strike on them to make them stay back on range. Lancelon, if you're a con, it keeps them back. It holds them back. It changes the way it operates. So combat's probably with the number one content that people need to chase, in my opinion, in the game. Um, next, easy. Volatile mixtures, enhanced ordnance. Go and chase them as a G-Metal. Go and get some gold cores of them. Um, and go and, obviously, 
fuse and it's very hard you can't really chase that specific one as such but you can just open G metal cores and get that and if you get it level it to max because again once you've got a, a max voltage mixture once you've got a max enhanced ordnance it goes on any bot you want it's not a G1 core specific to that bot voltage mixtures on X bot far away from the meta move it to the next bot all of a sudden back in the meta again so it's always good to have a couple of voltage mixtures a couple of enhanced ordnance cores that are you know maxed out will always be usable at the very least for some bots leveling things like that uh and next dead easy is spark you will always need spark you spark up your bots you max them all out they're all done new bot comes out you need spark again new combat comes out you need spark again new combiner comes out you need spark again you always will need spark no matter what guys go and chase spark Go and chase it. And that's why I say to people, you need to compete in wars. It's the easiest way to get Spark. If you need Combiner Spark, use your Shanix for Combiner or for Combat Spark. You will always need Spark. You can never have enough Spark. So all these sort of things, especially Energy and Alloy. You might think it's a bit crazy. You think, who really cares about Energy and Alloy, was it? But you'll always need it. Whether it's for base upgrades, whether it's for bot upgrades, switching cores, upgrading cores. There, there will always be a need for Energon and Alloy. And I'm not saying just keep chasing, 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 chasing it. But what I'm saying is just do your battles midweek and keep it topped up. You'll always need it for something. Every week I'm maxing out on Alloy and Energon. And whether it's for the Alliance HQ, whether it's for leveling some cores up, whether it's for... Um, leveling some bots in terms of their ability level. But if it's charging the shield gen, you'll always need ally and spark guys. So there's some resources in the game will always be viable, will always be needed. And some that are just there. And for me, those are the big contents uh, worth chasing. But for me, the number one content that you need to chase is XP. XP is probably the most important because you can have whatever combats, whatever resources in the game, you can have overflowing with Spark. But if you're putting them on bots at level 50, level 51, whatever, you're going to struggle. And so that's where you need to really hit events and level them bots up, whether that's spending or not. But XP is probably the biggest resource. And that's why GMetal XP cores are so important when leveling bots. Without high level bots, combats are irrelevant you can put a maxed out nightstick on a level 30 hot rod does not mean he's going to be decent all of a sudden you still need to level them bots so for me xp is the biggest resource that's why i come out with these videos on how to level quickly how to level efficiently how to level free to play all these ways to level bots xp is definitely without a doubt the most important resource you can get guys honestly but just take that away, guys. I'm not listen. I'm not saying for a minute, don't rank your bots up. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that before you go out and buy bundles, consider what it's going to do for your team. If you can get it free to play, why not? Hey, it's free. No one's going to argue and say you shouldn't uh, level your captains up with the uh, skips. It's mad. It's a skip. Go on, level it. It'll increase your team. What I'm saying is. Go, don't go out and spend all your five star shards on leveling two bots to captain and you miss the next batch and can't pull from it. What I'm saying is don't go out and blow $500 on a batch to get captain for one or two bots. That is what I'm saying, guys. Just monitor your spending, be careful with it, and use your spending on stuff that's going to really give you an advantage in the game.